Tools of the Trade. Welcome to IGTV, YouTube, wherever you're um, tuning in and listening for some good education and uh, sharing of experience in all of the years that I've been a strength conditioning coach. 30 years. I sat yesterday and I looked out on my gym. A gym where I literally could train a 10-year-old alongside Quentin Nelson. Same tools, okay? Different methodologies, different mentality, different goals, yet the tools of the trade, yeah, cool things come around all the time. However, over the years, some of the things that are good, they stay good, just like a carpenter who has a really brand new, shiny tool that he likes to bring to a job site, guaranteed at some point he's grabbing his old hammer. He's grabbing that old hammer with a little rust on it, a little dust, a little dirt from all the years. Okay, so today what I want to do is talk about tools and I want to talk about what's good to have in your home and what to look for in your facility. A lot of you guys are my clients and I know I can't wait to start working with you again once we're, uh, we're back from the coronavirus, but this is a time of education for me, a time to make sure that I'm educating, not just training you, but I want to make sure that you understand the why behind the tools of the trade. So when you're talking about tools, look at the tools that I've listed off of here, okay? Kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells. I use platforms, racks, benches, bumper plates, straps, plyo boxes, cones, PVC pipes. We use belts. We use Olympic barbells. We use chalk. We have trap bars. We have push up handles. We have ab wheels, metal plates. All the different machines include cardio machines, selectorized machines. We use TRX straps. We use rubber bands, medicine balls, big physio balls. Chains, furniture sliders, foam rollers, hurdles, the balance equipment, like the balance boards and the wobbly discs, specialized bars, like the big bar I got for Quentin Nelson for, uh, uh, he was getting ready for, uh, for Notre Dame, and at Notre Dame they use that uh, inverted bar, I got one of those, I have specialty bars that we use for different things. The cables are a part of the machines, okay? Ropes, tires, sleds. We always use collars for safety. Anybody that's not lifting with collars, most likely if you're bench pressing by yourself, I say it's, it's unsafe, okay? But if you are bench pressing by yourself in an unsafe environment, don't put collars on so you could turn the bar off to the side. But don't bench press alone, okay? We use bungee cords and of course I have mats. Are there more equipment? Sure there are. But the basics is what I'm here to talk about. The nuts and bolts, okay? Look at number one. Bam. That's the thing that you all have right now. You all have your body weight to use at home. I'm putting stuff out online, different body weight exercises, body weight progressions, body weight, body weight. Yes, yes, yes. You could do it every day. My next talk will be on overtraining. Try not to do your body weight calisthenic routines for more than 60 to 75 minutes. Just like if you're doing cardio, outside, running, biking. Make sure that you're not going for longer than 75 minutes. And there's some uh, research about hormones and things that, we, uh, uh, that I can guarantee you, you stick to those guidelines, we won't overtrain. But again, today we're talking about tools. There's your tool, the number one tool. Red stars for ages 10 to 13. If you're setting up a home gym, I recommend every one of my athletes have some home exercise equipment. A lot of my athletes also have a general gym that they go to where there's no instruction. They also have school-based programs. The world is your gym. So I say always set it up so in a case like this, we're ready to go. And one of my former athletes today sent me a video of him squatting and I was coaching him up. Dan Garrett, be careful with that hip, baby. Love the aggressiveness. But again, he had access to stuff at home. 
You don't want to train all the time at home because you don't have a professional coach in your house. Everybody needs a professional coach, and I hope all you Monmouth County athletes are going to want to come to me at some point and get some hands-on human coaching one-on-one -on -one so I can see your sweat popping off the bar, okay? But body weight is number one. In the red, look at the things that I say all of those youngsters need. Between the ages of 10 and 13, after the body weight, I believe firmly that kettlebells, dumbbells, PVC pipe, push-up handles, ab wheels, furniture sliders, physio balls, medicine balls, rubber bands, TRX straps, appropriate size tires, battle ropes for roping, for climbing, are all appropriate for this age. Okay? Notice I put and didn't put barbells there. Most kids age 10 to 13 don't have the, uh, the coaching to be able to lift the barbells like my son's got me with him. So is he lifting barbells? Of course he's lifting barbells because I can coach him. But barbells are more dangerous and there's a lot of imbalances that can be developed as a result of too much barbell training and not enough of this balance work that we do one arm at a time, one leg at a time. Dumbbells and kettlebells, while you're doing them, offer a unilateral, side-by-side -side approach. You can see, with me, I'm not, I don't have as much range of motion right to left, do I? I don't, because of my shoulder surgery. So I use dumbbells and kettlebells therapeutically, because I'm still striving for balance. Again, folks, these dumbbells, kettlebells, the PVC pipe is the tool that will help your kids get ready to learn the Olympic lifts and the power lifts, okay? But at ages 10 to 13, those youth kids, look at all the things that we can do. If you just look at all the red stars and think about all the exercise programs, it's limitless. And we don't even have all of these tools covered. It's infinite. Infinity. Again, I talked about variation the other day. Don't get too crazy with this. We got to squat. We got to push. We got to pull. We got to carry stuff. We got to do single leg. We got to push stuff along the ground. Pull it. I pick things up. I put things down. These are wonderful tools. Again, basics that I believe are vital. All right? So, in those ages, Vital tools. Now, let's move up. 13 to up. 13, high school age all the way to college. I gotta make sure I stay on camera, okay? Because I move around a lot. 13 and up. Now look at the other things that we have available. Da-da, power barbell, Olympic barbell. Difference, a power bar is thicker. It doesn't um, whip as quick and it won't bend, it's a stiffer bar. That's for the big weights. You can get some combo bars that are really good for beginners, but if you're a serious athlete, by the time you get to high school, you really ought to know the difference between an Olympic weightlifting bar and a powerlifting bar. And train appropriately. Don't be doing heavy squats or bench press with an Olympic lifting bar, just like you don't want to do cleans with a stiff old powerlifting bar. It's very important to understand and know the difference between the tools here. Powerlifting barbell, Olympic lifting barbell. Different. But I'm going to tell you this. If I took my basics here, right? 10 to 13, and just added the barbell, I'm set for life as a strength and conditioning coach to get bigger, stronger, faster athletes, and if you want to be a lean, mean, adult machine, a parent of an athlete, again, weight lifting is a must for general fitness. Weight lifting is a must. Is a kettlebell a weight? Yep. Is a dumbbell a weight? Yep. Is a barbell a weight? Yep. Is a tire a weight? Of course it is. Anything that you can pick up that carries gravity is a weight. That's why at home now we're filling up uh, you know, gallon jugs of water and such.
to make, to make weights, to make things weigh a certain amount, but we can pick them up and put them down. You could do a grocery bag workout if you had to, fill with groceries, and away you go with our movements. Squat, push, pull, carry, balance, and of course, you gotta do a little bit of cosmetic bodybuilding because summer is coming. We will have our shirts off at the beach. I promise you that. Please, Lord, we wanna be at the beach with our shirts off, feeling good about our hard work, okay? But if I had to pick, again now, you're talking about a dude who's been at it 30 years. I have seen from the ground up, the long-term development, still to this day, I will guarantee that my high-level NFL dudes are still using barbells. Guarantee you that they still are. I have limited resources at some of the schools that I've worked with over the years. Okay, If I've got a barbell, I hopefully have a platform for safety and a rack for safety. But still, if you don't have a platform or a rack in your garage, if you got a barbell and some metal and hopefully bumper plates, I like the bumper plates because they can do both. I'd rather you not use metal plates for Olympic lifts because coming down, crashing on the floor, you can ruin your equipment. But bumper plates can be used. They're a little bit more diverse. You can use bumper plates for power lifts, squats, bench, deadlift, and all of your Olympic lifts. Clean and jerk, clean, snatch, and all the varieties of. However, the bumper plate, I believe, is a little bit more versatile. Takes up more space on the bar. So if you're a dude who's um, pulling over 400 pounds, you might want to invest in some metal plates, okay? But I'm telling you, the barbell is the king, baby, from here on up. The advanced people out here who don't have, uh, by the way, woohoo, collars, yep. I said it again, collars, safety, safe, aggressive training concepts. Kevin, Chris, I hope you're listening and watching. Safe, aggressive concepts is what we're all about. But the, the barbell alone can make for a big, strong, fast athlete, okay? The high school where I do most of my work, Red Bank Catholic High School, man, I got five platforms. Some of the other stuff hardly ever gets used. Why? Because that works, and it has worked for years and years. And again, as long as you follow the principles that I talk about with balance, injury prevention, we got to warm up right, all of those are for another talk. But I'm telling you, the tools of the trade, if you really want to get bigger, stronger, faster, more durable athletes at around age 13, then we start investing in the coaching of the barbell lifts and implementing them consistently a hundred times a year, four to 500 of those lifts in high school, man, and you've got a robust, strong, durable kid. And that's what mainly JM Power U is about, is the kids. I work with a lot of parents. I love adult fitness. I like keeping myself in shape as a 55-year-old guy. But my, uh, my passion and enthusiasm is for you kids. And the reality, why my, uh, my gym is so barbell oriented is because I know it works. I've seen it happen now thousands of times. Thousands of case studies don't lie. If I was trying eight weeks, that would be different. But we're talking about 30 years, thousands of cases. I know for a fact that consistent healthy barbell training, and you have to mix it up, of course. We have to mix these things up. We can't just do the same lift, set, rep, over and over. I think if you watched my body weight on YouTube, there's so many ways that you can vary just one lift, the squat. Look at the squat with the barbell, the back squat, the front squat, the overhead squat, the split squat. They're all part of this thing we call lifting weights, okay? So the weight lifting will dominate our tools for strength, power, and size, always. The other stuff's gravy, it's spice, it's throwing a little bit more spice in that chili on a Sunday because grandma, she don't taste so good anymore. She needs a little bit more hot sauce in the chili. You get me? That's part of 
strength and conditioning. He's making it fun, making it spicy, while always having the ingredients, good meat. You gotta have the beans, you gotta have the whatever else my wife throws in there. Honey, you have great turkey chili, by the way. So when you look, right? 10 to 13, 13 and up is barbell oriented there. Take picture, I'll take a picture of it, I'll post it later. The notes, okay? Now, the advanced. That's about periodization and progression. That is another talk. But when you look at the tools, many of you have the tools already. <laughs> this is the coronavirus special, ha ha! You got your body weight, let's go. Again, try not to go 60 to 75 minutes a day. More than that, because then we're overtraining. But the, the point I'm trying to make, and the point these glasses have uh, seen their better days, the point is that you have a lot of the tools. A lot of these fitness warehouses are, um, are out of stock now because of this virus. But when we get back to the real world, hopefully now you've got some equipment at home. Why is it good to have stuff at home, stuff at school? You got a gym membership around the corner and then you come to JM Power a couple times a week. Because now the world is your gym and the big thing that there never will be again is an excuse not to train. Like I said, 100 times a year. When you know what these tools are, how to use them, video tutorials are only a little part of really how to use. You need good coaching. Good coaching in the flesh makes the biggest difference when it comes to using these tools. A beautiful new hammer is just a hammer when it's in the hands of an amateur. But boy, you take that hammer and put it in the hands of a craftsman, of someone who's been around for a while, and he can make artwork out of his carpentry. So I look at myself somewhat of as a carpenter building these young athletes, and it's the tools of the trade that are only in the toolbox. It's how you use them, how often you use them, and again, I'm going to tell you, the basics. Look at that. Look at the basics in red. Yeah, a good floor mat is smart. You want to do your abs and your stretching and your floor work, your cool down, your stretch on a good mat, okay? The, the reality is, again, I am here to make the point that, A, most of you already have some tools at your disposal, and B, make sure that you're consistent in your practice. Now there's no excuse not to lift three days a week, right? Some of you are going to be lifting four days a week. I don't recommend anybody that's watching this lift five or more days a week because I am not a, a, a bodybuilding guy, I'm not a bodybuilding guru or a fitness competitor guru. That's another channel. But if you're into sports performance and the game of life, life is a sport. If you're an athlete in the game of life, whether you're a parent or a kid, know your tools and reach out to your coach. I'm not going to hound you. You gotta hound me. All right, I wanna know that you're engaged. I'm reaching out and I'm contacting my folks with videos like this, but I wanna know that you're into it. Keep sending me your videos. Keep calling me up. Text me. I wanna know that you're doing good. May God bless you, and I'll put this on YouTube and Instagram TV. Thank you.